Because you need extra heat to grow tomatoes out of season, it makes them more expensive. And that's one reason why the vast majority of tomatoes we buy in the UK have been imported from overseas. John Jones at Guy and Wright in Hertfordshire supplies two of the biggest supermarkets. To get the best performance from the fruit and the plant, we need to give the plant everything that it needs. The right heat, the right humidity control, uh, the right feed in the slab. So your job, your main job, is to cater for every single need of this tomato plant. That's it, we nurture it. Turning up the heating to simulate summer on this scale costs a fortune. As the price of fuel rockets, John's tomatoes might simply become too expensive. But he's come up with an ingenious idea. He's recycling waste fruit and veg from large wholesale markets and overripe imported food. What's wrong with these? There's nothing wrong with these. Well, those in particular are ones that we've just deboxed this week. They actually came from the docks and they were too ripe. They were too ripe, you see. I, I don't think they're ready for eating you. I'm staggered by how much of this waste there is. Have we gone completely bananas? Look at all this. It's hard to believe that this is actual waste. You know, these have come from overseas, the Caribbean, and because they're probably not just perfect, they're thrown out. I mean, some of them aren't even ripe yet. Look at these ones. Still green. And you open them up, look at this. Open that up. And there's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It seems criminal. There's something seriously wrong when we're wasting this amount of food. And it's not just bananas. But at least we can put them to some use. John has come up with a way to use this wasted fruit and veg to heat these glass houses, saving a fortune in fuel. The bananas are tipped into this giant hopper, along with tons of other fruit and veg that would otherwise go into landfill, and then mashed into a pulp. So this is where you make a great big banana smoothie, is it? That's it. The liquid is held in here. You won't eat a spoonful of that, would you? <laughs> and then pumped into concrete tanks underground. Inside the tanks, trillions of bacteria feed on the waste, giving off lots of highly flammable methane gas. Wow, look at that. Looks like tar from down there, isn't it? The methane gas is burned to produce electricity, which is then used to heat all the glass houses. By burning the methane, John is producing a lot of carbon dioxide. And here's one of John's really clever ideas. Tomatoes ripen much more quickly when there's extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So he pumps the waste gas into the glass houses. The plants absorb the carbon dioxide and produce a lot more tomatoes. So providing this microclimate, how does it affect your productivity? We can achieve in a block like this, which is an acre, almost 300 tonnes out of here. And what would that have been like, say, 40 years ago? 60, 70. Really? 60 or 70. That increase. So I'm really shocked to see the amount of rejected fruit and veg which turns up here every week. But I suppose, thanks to John's ingenuity, it's not wasted.